Today, let us take some time to understand God's will with the sermon titled, Give Thanks and Praise to God. Let us read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If this is God's will, we must always find something to give thanks for in our life. God tells us to give thanks always. However, sometimes we forget this teaching, which causes us to grumble often, complain, or gossip about matters concerning other people, according to our temperament or how we feel. Through these foolish acts, we are hindered from doing God's holy will. In all the situations and circumstances around us, there are things to give thanks for. A newspaper journalist visited the head office of our church and asked us during an interview, what do you think about COVID-19? Of course, it is heartbreaking that COVID-19 is a disease that takes away the lives of many people. However, it made me think, is there anything that we can give thanks for in this pandemic? When I tried to find things to give thanks for in this situation, I was able to find many things that had been hidden before. If COVID-19 had not broken out, would all the members have had a chance to experience the online worship? About 12 months have passed since the pandemic began. Many members visited the church website, watched the church videos, and sent the link to people who live far away saying, please watch these videos until we can meet again. In this way, online preaching, worship, and education have become highly active. Before, we had all been thinking, we need to preach our gospel online someday. And as this situation occurred, we were able to find multiple gospel tools that we had not discovered before. Now we can hear the news that many members are bearing gracious fruit through online preaching as they sent our online sermons to their acquaintances, friends, and families. Before, we used to have a meeting in a particular place with only the people who could physically be there. Now, however, anyone can attend the meeting as long as they have access to the Internet. The members who were unable to make it before, because of distance, can now participate in many online church events. This makes me think, truly, we must find a way to give thanks, rather than complain and grumble, no matter what the situation. God's goal is to give us blessings in the end, isn't it? Fish that are alive swim against the current. In fact, most all fish swim upstream, even though it is harder for them to swim against the current. Through this example, we can understand why God allows some adversity and hardship in our lives. Through 
there were matters that we did not give much attention to in the past. Before, we may have only given 10% of our attention to these matters. However, by giving 70%, 80%, or 100% of our attention to them, we can find God's true will all the more. Therefore, instead of thinking, why did God put this kind of person around me? Or, it seems that all other people live peacefully. Why does my family have so many hardships and pain? We should think, we need hardship to build up our strength, which enables us to overcome. For this reason, rather than a smooth path, what does God place in the paths of His loving children? For them to overcome little by little, both in the time of the early church and in this present gospel age, God places difficulties and hardships for us to overcome. While overcoming them, we learn what we have not experienced. However, without experiencing difficulties, we will not learn very much since we do not pay enough attention to them. However, now with difficulties, we will learn 90% or 100% more by paying extra attention to solve these problems. That is why God said, Give thanks in all circumstances. God gives us many things to be thankful for in all circumstances. We must believe this and give all thanks, praise, and glory to God. Instead of thinking, Why do I have these hardships, although I believe in God? We ought to think, This problem could have been more difficult, but God made it much easier because I believe in God. My family could have been shattered by this issue, but God let just a small part of it happen so that we can learn wisdom to overcome it. When we give thanks, God creates more things to be thankful for. We are well aware of these kinds of teachings through the Bible. However, when we actually face hardships, it is difficult to think about the situation in this way. We only focus on what is happening. Why did this happen to me? Why me? Other people have hardships too. Doesn't God call us the living saints or the living? God made it so that all living beings will go through hardships. If a fish is swept away downstream by the current, it is not considered alive. Therefore, doesn't the Bible describe the gospel work as a good hardship? Since God called us gospel soldiers who participate in the good hardship, we ought to give thanks to God even for hardships. Then we can be joyful while giving thanks. We must make it to the kingdom of heaven with joy and thankfulness. We should not complain thinking, why did God put these kinds of people only around me? My friend has wonderful parents and all his family members are amazing. Why are my family members so shabby and lacking in so many things? There is absolutely no need to make this kind of comparison. No matter how outstanding the people of this world are, can they reign in the kingdom of heaven? If you have a role model in this world, you need to think if he or she will reign in heaven. When we go to heaven, we will live in castles full of all kinds of precious stones that are beyond description. We were born on the earth, not with a silver spoon, but with a spoon made of gemstones. However, while staying on the earth temporarily, we fail to carry out this role. That is why we complain and grumble instead of giving thanks. If we think of heaven, we will be able to endure. When we think of the glory of reigning in heaven, we shouldn't think about who is higher or lower on the earth. Rather, we should think about who is making more effort to put father and mother's will into practice and resemble God. Those people are the ones who will be the most respected and greatest in heaven. We should not only think of the things on earth. 
when God tells us to humble ourselves, we just need to humble ourselves. And when God tells us to be considerate, we just need to be considerate. And when God tells us to be thankful, we just need to be thankful. If we do what is written in the Bible, which is Father and Mother's love letter, we can be respected in heaven. Sometimes, we may suffer hardships by being persecuted, scorned, and ridiculed by the people on the earth. However, if we follow Father and Mother's will, what kind of people will we be in heaven? God has written all the ways for us to be blessed in this book. But what if we refuse to follow them? God says give thanks. But what if we keep complaining? God tells us to see the bright side. But what if we keep pointing out the dark side? The way to heaven that we are walking is a joyful way that we should be thankful for. However, it is a difficult path from the physical point of view. It is a steep, rough, and narrow path. However, when we look at it from the viewpoint of faith, it is a happy and blessed path because heaven is waiting for us after the hardship, isn't it? I'm not saying that this path is smooth physically. Physically, it is not an easy path. However, when we cover that path with faith and think of the kingdom of heaven which is coming, our path becomes a happy path. Everyone, let's say a criminal has to walk one kilometer to his execution chamber. That path is more painful than hell. It is the most painful path on earth. However, what if you are walking one kilometer to meet your family whom you have not seen for 30 years or someone you love? What kind of path is it then? Even if it is a rocky path one kilometer long, you will not regard it as difficult. Although it is the same environment, it looks different depending on our faith. Instead of thinking that the path we are walking is painful and difficult, let us think about the world God will give to us and say, Today too, I am thankful. I am happy that I am with father and mother. I am thankful that God has called me to Zion. I am thankful because God has given me the blessing of eternal life and salvation. Everyone, there are tens of thousands of things to give thanks for. However, if we easily throw away God's grace and blessings because of something small, then we are worse than Esau. Let us give thanks. Let us not look at the environment around us. Since the earth is the city of refuge, it is not a world like heaven where everything goes well. When we go to heaven, we can do everything we want. God has made that system. Are we not living in the age of AI? You can just tell your rice cooker to cook rice, and it will. And just tell your robot vacuum to clean, and it does. I've never used them, but I've heard that we already have these things. The world that is unimaginable and beyond compare is going to become ours in the near future. This is the reason why we should endure with gratitude and joy. There is a reason we should be patient and endure. There is a reason we should be considerate. Isn't there also a reason we should humble ourselves? As we fail to take this into consideration, but always try to judge things from a physical point of view, we come to only look at the things that are right in front of us. Sometimes, that is why we become irritated by the workload. In actuality, it is not that there is a lot of work, but just that we cannot handle the work. Since we cannot manage to do it, we get irritated. That's why God said, give thanks and be joyful always. During this coronavirus pandemic, so many people have lost their jobs and are now wandering around seeking employment. However, father and mother have given us circumstances that allow us to work without becoming weary until we go to heaven. If we do not give thanks, we will keep thinking about the secular world. Although the external environment changes, 
the kingdom of heaven never changes. Heaven always stays where it is. We should go forward longing for heaven, right? Let us look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and He will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Regarding the prophecy that He has come into earth in the flesh a second time, there is one thing we need to think about. Everyone, you know the term trauma, right? It refers to an emotional response to a painful event that someone once experienced and feels the same pain again when put in a similar situation, although it is not happening again. In order to save mankind, God came to earth in the flesh 2,000 years ago. When He came, He let mankind know how to go to heaven. It is because sinners cannot know the way by themselves. God explained all the ways for us to become heavenly people. However, the Jews put a crown of thorns on God, who came in the flesh, pierced His side with a spear, and crucified Him, because the way He came did not agree with the common sense they had learned. His pain was so tremendous that it is written in the Bible, while He was praying, His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. It is because He was thinking of such a painful situation. It did not end with Him thinking about it, but He was actually scorned, spat on, and crucified. People even cast lots for His undergarment and took turns trying it on. Father suffered the most extreme humiliation and the worst pain that humans could ever feel. But He promised to come again to this place where He had this traumatic experience. If you fall victim to a robber in the street, would you want to go back to that street, whether it is daytime or nighttime? But our God came again to the place where He had such a traumatic experience. Why did He come back? Did He come back to gain gold? The only planet where God was treated mercilessly and cruelly enough to be traumatized is planet Earth. Why do you think God came back to this place? God came for our salvation. Since we cannot be saved unless He comes, God came although it is a place where He had such a traumatic experience. Brothers and sisters, when we think about what great love God is giving to us, we can overcome the small things that we are experiencing, even the inconvenient and unfair things caused by other brothers and sisters. Our God endured even greater pain and silently walked the path with patience. But what if we, who are God's children, cannot walk that kind of path? Are we carrying out God's will properly? We need to think about this at least once. Heavenly Father came to earth where He had a tremendously traumatic experience for the heavenly sinners who were destined to die. Then how should we live our lives from now on? Do you ever say to father and mother, how come you did this for other members but not for me? We must be joyful always. We must give thanks. Now we must become mature. If all people around me always do everything I ask them to do, who can play the role of the crown of thorns to me? Who can play the role of a spear that pierces me? Can we say that we resemble father and feel confident that we resemble mother? Through these hardships, we must keep changing to resemble God. If we resemble father and mother in every way, 
There is nothing else that the angels who are guarding the gates of heaven need to check when we go to heaven. Our resemblance itself is a certificate of authenticity. It is a certified check, since only their children can resemble God the Father and God the Mother. The angels will say, Come in, enter the gates. We must follow Father and Mother's path graciously. What should we do when we follow their path? We must give thanks. God has given us so many things to be thankful for, here and there. Nevertheless, we might complain every day saying, I need this or I need that, and not saying thank you even once. When we were immature, we used to pray to father and mother, please do this and that for me. However, once we become mature, we ought to say, thank you for everything. Praise be to you. What does it say in the book of Revelation? What do the angels and 24 elders do in heaven? Every day they say, you are holy. We can only praise you. No one says, why did you give me less grace while you gave that member more grace? Comments like these do not even exist in heaven. They only say, thank you. We give glory to you. Since you endured the traumatic experience of death for these sinners, we were able to come to heaven. We are extremely grateful for this. How can we complain or grumble here? That is why we give thanks in all circumstances and praise God always. Even if a situation more severe than this coronavirus pandemic comes, we must never forget God. Let us always keep in mind the great love of God. Let us take a look at Luke chapter 5, verse 21. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother proclaimed the truth of the New Covenant to the children who were living under heavy loads of sin so that we can be forgiven. Do people of the world know the New Covenant? Do they know how to receive the forgiveness of sins? Do they know God who has come in the flesh with the authority to forgive sins? How about us? We have received so much grace and know so many things. However, knowing is not enough. We should give thanks and praise for all that we know. We are serving God the Father and God the Mother, the Spirit and the Bride, who can remove any sin that has not been forgiven for tens of thousands of years just by saying, you have been forgiven. We are serving Almighty God. Therefore, we must not be trapped in this physical world. Losing our faith and hope for heaven or corrupting our spirit because of something trivial. This Almighty God is with us. Didn't God proclaim to us through the New Covenant Passover, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has the forgiveness of sins and eternal life? They say that as the economy improves, people become more impatient with small inconveniences. In the old days, it was something natural for several people to share one room. Of course, this does not apply to everybody. However, nowadays many people live alone. Even two people from the same family find it difficult to live together. Everyone wants their own room and private space. That is why even if something happens that is a little unpleasant, it can cause a big issue. That is why God said, the children of Zion ought to keep these words no matter what the external environment is like. The kingdom of heaven is for those who pass the spiritual training. 
Isn't this why God repeatedly says, Obey my words? Due to our sins, we are confined in a physical space right now. However, when we return to our eternal heavenly home in the future, we will understand that the reason God gave us frustrating situations that required our patience on the earth was to bless us. We will understand that father and mother have given us those teachings in the Bible to bless us. In the 66 books of the Bible, God recorded the way for us to go to heaven and live a happy life. We need to keep practicing the teachings of God. Let us not fail to do so. Father has come to Zion. Mother has come to Zion. And they taught us their ways in these last days. Just the fact alone that we are receiving teachings from them, we should say thank you. Thank you. Do others have a chance to hear God's teachings even though they want to? God Himself has come and taught us His ways. Just as it is written, He will teach us His ways. Had we not learned His ways, we would have failed to recognize Mother and lived a meaningless life, even if Mother was right next to us. We would have failed to recognize the truth even though it is right next to us and wasted our lives thinking, since many people keep Christmas, Let's also enjoy that day. All those things are factors that would lead them to hell. A red flag continues to be raised before them as a warning. Nevertheless, people keep repeating that behavior, disregarding the warnings. However, since we have been taught by father and mother, we think this is something that serves us as a warning on our way to heaven. So we should not do that. I believe that the fact alone that we have learned God's ways from Him is more than enough reason to be joyful, give thanks, and praise always. When we think about how God taught us His ways in the last days and came back to the world where He had a traumatic event, we ought to say, thank you so much, we give you glory. We don't need to say anything else like, Mother, I'm exhausted because of this. I feel hurt and I'm in pain because of that. We don't need to say these things. Instead, let us give thanks in all circumstances. Whether or not we are in the coronavirus pandemic, let us think, I guess there is a reason why we need to go through this pandemic. Let us help brothers and sisters find the way to give thanks to father and mother, even in this situation. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be whom to you? A father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God has become our Father and given us the flesh and blood of the New Covenant Passover to make us His children whom even the heavenly angels can recognize. So what is there that we need to complain and grumble about? We are heavenly sinners who were destined to die. We sinned against God with an arrogant heart like that of the morning star, who tried to exalt his throne higher than God's throne, and we were cast down to this earth. We are literally sinners who have to die. To these sinners, father and mother said, You are my son. You are my daughter. I am your father. I am your mother. With this kind of heart, father and mother came to us and regarded us as their children. Everyone, could there be any more grace than this? We should be tolerant to our brothers and sisters as long as they are not hindering or denying the truth. We all lack in something. Every one of us is lacking in something. There is something others do better than us or not as well as us. Since we are all like this, don't we need to help each other improve what we're lacking in? 
so that we can become brothers and sisters with good faith? Every society is depressed right now. But we feel so thankful to God, even in this depressing tunnel, since God has given us greater hope for the bright future, even through the coronavirus pandemic. Truly, we cannot help but give thanks to father and mother. Although the physical path is a little rough and challenging, I hope we always walk this path with joy, following father and mother to heaven. I ask all the title and position holders of Zion and all the brothers and sisters to be joyful always and give much thanks, glory, and praise to God. Hoping that you have received much grace through today's word, I'd like to conclude the sermon. Thank you very much.